Hey there! I'm here today to tell you some basics about storyboards. But before we begin, let me talk about the history of storyboarding. It actually started way earlier than you might think, so let's get right into it. The practice of telling stories and depicting movement through a progression of pictures actually dates back to the old Egyptians or the European Middle Ages. And that practice got further developed by Disney Studios in the 30s, when they started using it as part of the pre-production of their animated movies. It's basically a series of illustrated shots used to plan and visualize motion pictures. What's a shot, you ask? Not that. It's a term in filmmaking. A movie consists of multiple scenes, which are made up of multiple shots. In editing, the term shot refers to a sequence between two cuts. The shots, in turn, are made up of multiple frames. Now that you have all the important background knowledge, I can go ahead and tell you about how to make your own storyboard. First of all, the storyboard consists of multiple panels, and usually each one represents one shot. The format of the panels is the same as the aspect ratio of the movie the storyboard is for. The term aspect ratio describes the relationship between the height and width of the frame. In the early days of filmmaking, the common aspect ratio was 133 to 1. With time, the aspect ratio developed more and more towards the widescreen format. The most common format today is 16 to 9, which is also the format of most digital screens we use in our everyday lives. Cinematic productions today normally use the 2.35 to 1 standard ratio. This widescreen format is very good for framing close-ups or landscapes and panoramas. Now after you picked an aspect ratio for your movie, you can start storyboarding. Here you're by no means limited to the panel itself, but you can also use the space around it, for example, to take notes. One of the basic rules you should keep in mind while composing your shots is the rule of thirds. To do so, you divide the panels into thirds, horizontally and vertically. The resulting cross points are where you should place your focus point for an aesthetically pleasing result. Here's an example. Generally speaking, you should always pay attention to the rule of off-center. This one, for example, looks boring. Another way to control the focus is by framing the subject of the scene. Let's try. You can use oval shapes, for example, which direct the viewer's eyes to the intended center of attention. Or you can use the so-called foreground framing. Here, you use objects in the foreground to frame the center of attention in the middle or background. Which brings us to the next point. The depth of field. This basically means that your setting is roughly divided into three planes. So you need to be aware of which plane your action is happening on, aka where the camera's focus is supposed to be. The foreground, the middle ground or the background. Now that we talked about that, let's get to the most important part. The depiction of movement in a storyboard. There are two kinds of movements we will talk about. The character movement and the camera movement. But before we get more into that, we need to clarify the different types of shots. First, we have the establishing shot, which is usually used at the beginning of the scene to let the viewers know where the action takes place. Then we have the full shot, which shows the character's full body and focuses on their movement. Up next is the close shot, where the character's face or head takes up most of the frame. Followed by the extreme close-up, which only shows specific details like one eye or the mouth. Another important shot is the over-the-shoulder shot, which is often used during conversation scenes. However, the camera obviously isn't static, so here comes a little excurse into camera movement. In order to show camera movement in storyboards, most artists use arrows. The first kind of movement is the pan, where the camera is slowly rotated on a fixed axis. It is mostly used for landscapes and establishing shots. The dolly shot is where the entire camera moves towards the subject of the frame. It's similar to the zoom, but not the same, since here the camera itself doesn't move, which gives this shot a more dramatic effect. Another common movement is the tilt up or tilt down. And here are the arrows again to show movement of characters. Here's an example. As you can see, the fact that these frames are done in a pretty simple style makes it easier to understand and see what's important. Now we are almost at the end of this guide, but before we conclude, let's talk about lighting. 
the lighting plays a vital part in defining the atmosphere and mood of the scene. However, it is a very complex topic, so we will only cover the very basics today. The most important light is usually the key light. It's a bright light focused on the most important aspect of the frame or scene. Generally speaking, a scene with little to no light will appear more somber or dark. A bright light, on the other hand, usually symbolizes a happy and bright mood. Related to this interesting topic is the topic of color, which is also crucial to the mood and atmosphere, but very rarely used in storyboards. For example, you can use red to highlight important aspects of the frame. Now let's conclude our little guide with a quick summary. So a storyboard is a pre-visualization tool for motion pictures. When composing the shots, mind the rule of thirds. Remember to frame your focus points appropriately. And lastly, use arrows to illustrate movements. Before I go though, I'd like to introduce you to the next step of the production process. The animatic. What is an animatic, you ask? It's basically all the panels of the storyboard put into a video to get a feeling for the timing of each shot. So basically, exactly like the video you just watched.